just continuing on with my work night here, feeding different roaches. And we talked a little bit before about the glow spot roaches. These ones here are called the warty glow spots. Like the regular glow spots, the males also have those two yellow spots up on their heads, which supposedly also glow in nature when they have access to bacteria and other natural things in the diet. They're called warty glow spots maybe because of the bumps up there on the pronotum, that shield-shaped section behind the head. You can see that the coloration on these ones is a little different than in the standard glow spots. These reduced wings are darker, sort of a coppery or orange coloration to them. Some banding there on the abdomen, whereas in the prior species we showcased, it was all black there on the abdomen. I find these ones to be a little bit more attractive than the other ones, although both are equally popular because of their ease and handleability. You can see that they're a pretty relaxed species. I've been feeding carrots here all evening, so my fingers are a little bit orange. See the roach there? Take some nice close-ups of them here in a moment because we didn't get any close-ups of the other species. The eye shape of roaches is extremely interesting. Let's see if we can come around. <laughs> Perhaps he senses the light. But you see, they're sort of comma-shaped rather than round, the eyes. And there's a good shot of the nymph with its orange head and little white stripes there on the antennae. And with these roaches, as well as in hissers, you get some good-sized males. I would call that a major male. And we'll put this little guy over near him so that you can see the difference in the size of these two males. Camera doesn't really pick it up and so I'm going to bring them back around again here. Really exquisite coloration actually too on this major male. A lot of additional colors up there on top of the body. I mean, a lot of people have almost phobic reactions to cockroaches, and part of that is because there are just a few species, like the German cockroach, the Oriental cockroach, and a few others that have become pests in human homes, and of course it's not really their fault. We're humans and we create these artificial habitats that are extremely clean and then we leave a bunch of crumbs and other things on the counter, turn the lights off, and really create perfect habitats for roaches and a few other organisms that really like to live in the same conditions we do. And of course, natural predators for the roaches are absent in between the walls in apartment buildings, for example, and so they proliferate in there. I never really think of any insect species as a pest, though. Normally, it's all our fault that the animal is there in the first place. People bring them in for various reasons, and then they get out of control. So we've seen some males here. Let me see if I can find a female. There's a female. She has a little bit of damage in her wings there. Kind of odd. Oh, perhaps it's not damage. Just a little bit of water was causing some of the substrate to stick to her. But 
you can see there that she does have a little bit of wing damage. Sometimes when they're molting, if you don't have these egg cartons in here or pieces of bark or wood, their wings don't unfurl correctly. Of course, the insect is completely white during the molt as it emerges from its old exoskeleton. That's how they grow, these small nymphs here. They shed their skin over and over again until they reach the adult size, and then like other insects, they are mature. And unlike tarantulas, female tarantulas, which continue to molt after they mature, all insects never molt again once they are mature. This frame right here shows the difference in the markings on the pronotum between the male and the female. And a little bit of communication. Getting a little friendly with each other there perhaps, and, and then mama gets distracted by one of her little ones. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to see the male give that little one a little kick? Get out of here! She's like, nah, I'm not having it anyway. It's fun to attribute human situations to the pets that we keep when, of course, doesn't actually always follow. Don't see a lot of sparring between the males in this species. I'm really liking the coloration, those black spots on the wings, some of these individuals in here. I actually haven't looked very closely at my roaches in a long time, this particular species anyway, and I find the coloration on the wings of this particular one to be really highlighting an already beautiful species. Lots of small nymphs in here. Again, like the regular glow spots, they take a long time, maybe a year to mature, could even be a little longer. It's hard to keep track. There's a lot of different roaches, different sizes in here, and I never really am able to monitor the growth. People ask me that question a lot. It depends a little bit also on the frequency of feedings. And again, this is sort of my standard offering to the majority of roaches that I keep. Some carrots, some bits of apple, and again, they are not picky at all. You can feed them almost anything that you would yourself eat, or these are fish food pellets, protein-based foods that you might feed your dog or your cat or your fish. And then I will also often pop open one of these jelly cups and put that in there too, to keep them hydrated and to provide a non-molding food that will last for them for a week or so, depending on how many of them are in the cage. Let's see if we can get down in here without shaking the camera up too much and <laughs> losing focus and maybe accidentally turning it off. I'm at an awkward angle here, but I think we're getting the shot. How the mouths work on roaches. You can see the little palps, those little mouth parts, appendages, sensory appendages. Helps them choose where to take the next bite. Helps them to know what is edible and what is not. Little one might get a little nibble there on a toe, sometimes when you're keeping colony pets. One gets a little too close to the other during the feeding process, the little ones, but they generally do just fine, and the worst case scenario is that the young one would then later, through a subsequent molt, regenerate the missing toe. Gordy glow spots. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Please feel free to add comments, ask any questions you might like about these or other roaches or anything else in the bug world. 
can also find me on Instagram where I routinely look at pictures that people send me and identify specimens that they found in their backyards and while they travel. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.